Hallelujah, hallelujah. Be greeted, the saints, in the name of Jesus, the Lord and the Savior of our souls, the, the Lord and Savior of our lives. You are greeted this morning, such a beautiful and a wonderful day that the Lord has made. It is a day that is full of the promises of God. It is full of victories in the name of Jesus. This very name, the Bible says, it is a strong tower. The rushes run into it. They are safe. We celebrate that in Christ we have found a place that we can call safe, a place of refuge, our fortress. The Bible says Christ is our defense. Christ is our protection. This morning you are welcome together with your families in this atmosphere where the presence of the Lord is enough. Where the presence of the Lord is, the Bible says there is liberty. Where the presence of the Lord is, there is healing. Where the presence of the Lord is, there is restoration. Where the presence of the Lord is, definitely there is deliverance. You are assured this morning as we prepare our hearts for prayer, this is an opportunity for us for intercession, which is an opportunity for us to pray. You, we are welcome to prepare our hearts, to prepare our spirit, that we may allow the word of God to work in us, allow the Holy Spirit to minister to us. Now, we are charged this morning that may we give our hearts to him and say, Lord, I just want to surrender my heart to you. I want to silence every noise. I want to silence every sound, but fully give my heart to you. As we come into a place of fellowship, we are preparing our hearts, Bazalwani, for the word of God. Wow, the Bible says when you read Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, the word of God is alive. Other versions, they say the word of God is quick. The word of God is powerful. The word of God is sharper than any double-edged sword. The word of God is able even this morning, even in this dispensation, even in this time, the word of God is able to separate, you know, bone and marrow. The word of God is able to separate the soul and the spirit. There's one portion that I love also in that scripture. Then it says the word of God is able to discern our thoughts. This morning we want to come before the throne of grace with thoughts that are aligned with the will of Christ. We want to pray this morning in a position where there is absolutely nothing in us that will arise and stand against the preaching and the ministry of the word. David says something that is wonderful in Psalms 119. He says the entrance of his word brings light. The word of God that we are going to receive this morning, I charge you that position yourself, that the light of Christ will come. Where there was darkness in your life, light will come and penetrate. The Bible says the word of God makes the simple wise. You might be saying this morning, I know nothing, but as you yield your spirit, give yourself to the word of God, you are guaranteed to be the one that will be counted amongst the ones. Just want to pray and charge the atmosphere and we will continue to declare the word of God together with our loved ones. Father, in the name of Jesus, the name the Bible says it has been exalted above all other names. We come, Lord, in submission. We come, Lord, in reverence. For you alone are God. Besides you, there is no other. We come this morning, my Father, because your record has been good and it shall continue to, to be good. It is in your word, where we find your purpose concerning us. Now this morning, hear the hearts of your people, my Father and my God. We come because we understand the word says, in Yimbi, Uban longa yad. This morning, kulungulwetona manda. May our hearts be aligned with you. In the name of Jesus Christ, kulungulwetona manda. We fully commit ourselves to you as we declare your word. This morning, kulungulwetona manda. We are using our tongues like a pen in the hand of a skillful writer. 
We are proclaiming, we are affirming your word, my God, in the name of Jesus. Take over the atmosphere in Jesus' mighty name. May you declare with me boldly, if you can, you can stand on your feet. If you can, you can walk around. If you can, you can hold the hands of your loved ones. We are declaring this morning, we are taking charge. We are proclaiming the word of God that is alive. I declare this morning morning that I am filled with the word of his knowledge. I declare this morning that I am filled with all spiritual wisdom. I declare this morning that I am filled with all spiritual wisdom. I declare this morning that I am pleasing unto the Lord. I declare this morning that I walk worthy of the Lord. And I proclaim this morning in the name of Jesus that I am increasing in knowledge. I am increasing in wisdom. Therefore, I am bound to be fruitful in the name of Jesus. I declare this morning that I am blessed to be a blessing to many. I declare this morning that I bear the name of the Lord and people of the earth will know that I belong to the Lord. I declare this morning in the name of Jesus that I am victorious. I declare in the name of Jesus that I move from power to power in the name of Jesus. I declare this morning that I am no longer a slave to sin. I declare this morning that I have been, transla have been translated by God from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. I walk in the light of Christ. Victory and victory and victory is what I walk into this morning in the name of Jesus and I declare that I am above any conqueror in the name of Jesus. May you be blessed as you receive the word of God. Believe every word that you have declared. Remember your word, your voice as you are declaring in the atmosphere. They have created electronic waves and you have charged the atmosphere. You are ready to receive of the word. Be blessed and shalom in Jesus name. Amen. <laughs> Specifically, the leadership of El Shaddai Tabernacle Church International, Bishop Vipin. I greet the Church of the Living God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. More specifically, the leadership of El Shaddai Tabernacle Church International, Bishop Vipim Daga and Mamorin, the presiding apostles, and the whole church at large. In this time, special time for the body of Christ, the Passover. We thank God that we are able to gather together in this manner because we know our God is spirit and our God is with us. And even though we may be apart, but we are able to be one in spirit and in mind and in fellowship. I greet you to share shortly about the church 
that is able to influence the next generation. Before we go further, please allow me to pray. Father, we thank you for this gathering in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We give you the glory. We crown you, Lord, over these airwaves, even now, in the mighty name of Jesus. We say, take over, Lord. Have the presiding omnipresent in every household, in every family, where this message is reaching. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. Brethren, allow me to begin with the fact that our God is a generational God. When we go to the Bible, we read in the book of Genesis, the book of beginnings. We read Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 to 3, where we find the call of Abram. When he was still called Abram, when God reveals himself to Abram, immediately he states the fact clearly that he is a generational God. May we read together Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country, your family, and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless them who bless you and kiss him who kisses you. And in you, all families of the earth will be blessed. Father, we bless the reading of your word. We receive it as bread and we pray that we may share it amongst each other for the nourishment of our soul and our spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Brethren, I am so excited about this scripture. God did not delay, he did not waste time to reveal to Abraham that Abraham, I'm calling you, but from you, I see nations. From you, I see many, many people that will come and worship me as Yahweh, the God of Israel, as Elohim, the God of all creation. But I will use your life, Abraham, and through you, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. We thank God that in the scripture, Abraham is being removed from his bloodline, from the family that he knows according to blood. He is being led to a family that he will have according to the spirit. It is a template for the whole church that even as a church, we shall be moved from the families of our bloodline to the families of the spirit. I wish to zoom in on verse 3 where the Lord says to Abraham, I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. And in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. It makes me so excited as an African that from the beginning, God had Africans in mind. From the start, God had us in mind. Abraham, you are Israel, but in you, I see Africa. So I'm not blessing you now, but I'm already having a generation in mind. So allow me, brethren, to move to the first, to the second testament that God is a God of generations. That's why we are called to be a church that is able to impact the next generation in Jesus' name. Amen. In Genesis chapter 35, we are now talking of the next lineage in Abraham's children. We know that Abraham, after having seen God, after being blessed by God, God even changed his name to testify that he is now a father of nations. Even the writer of the book of Hebrews 11 attests to this, that Abraham is not just a father of many nations as in Israel, but is a father of nations as a father of faith. So those of the house of faith are actually children of Abraham. Hallelujah. When God has said this, he even changed Abraham's name and said, you are now Abraham because now Elohim has come and showed forth in your life and decreed and declared that indeed through you, 
the nations of the world shall also be blessed. Future generations shall also walk in this blessing. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, brethren, we know that after this, Abraham received the fruit of, the, uh, of his own seed with Sarah, that they had children. We know there was Ishmael, the son of man's attempt. And then we have Isaac, the true son of the prophecy. So when the two boys are born, they also give birth to their own children. In Genesis chapter 5, we, uh, chapter 35, we meet one of Abraham's uh, grandchildren, who is the son of Isaac. His name is Jacob. Now, in chapter 35, God instructs Jacob to go back to Bethel, where they met, where Jacob first met God in Bethel. But God says to him, go back there. And when he arrives, God confirms the covenant that he made with Abraham. We'll start from verse 12. God says, the land that I gave Abraham and Isaac, I will give to you and to your descendants after you. I will give the land. Then God went up from him in the place where he had spoken with him. Jacob sent, set up a pillar in that place where God had spoken to him. And he poured a drink offering on it. And he poured oil on it too. So Jacob called the name of the place Bethel because that is where God has spoken to him. So it's a testament again where God is saying, I have a land, I have an inheritance to give to you. It is a land that I'm not giving for the first time. It's the same land that I gave to Abraham, your grandfather, and I gave to Isaac, your father. I am now giving it to you because I am a God who speaks to generations. I am a generational God. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, may we go to the main scripture. Those were introductory scriptures that had touched my spirit about the church that shall be able to impact the next generation. It's a challenge to us, brethren, because the next generation is very much techno-advanced. In fact, they're even called those people of the fourth industrial revolution. Their thinking is way ahead. Their thinking is fast. While the matter is happening in America, they know about it in Africa before the day is over. Meaning, there are some principles that we as the church of today need to embrace and hold on to those principles that have stood the test of time that we can be able to present to the next generation. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. The main scripture on which I am basing this is the book of Exodus chapter 12, which is the book of the Passover. It is one of the traditions, uh, the sacraments, the principles, the teachings that this church can safely pass to the next generation because it, had, it has withstood the test of time. Hallelujah. We'll read from verse 1, uh, then we'll stop at verse 4 and go on to verse 8. Hallelujah. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be the beginning of months to you. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the generation of Israel, saying, On the tenth day of this month, every man shall take a lamp. Please note, a man shall take a lamp according to the house of their fathers, meaning every man had to measure the family of their fathers, whether this lamp is adequate to feed, to feed the whole family. And if the lamp is too little, or if their family is too little, the family will share the lamp with their neighbors. Hallelujah. And the Lord said, if the household be too little for the lamp, let him and his neighbor next to his house 
take it according to the number of the persons. I will not go to the details of how the lamb was supposed to be. Please allow me, children of God, to focus on this family preparing to have a Passover and prepare for the next generation. So a family had to sit as a family, meaning they, if there were fathers, mothers, grandmothers, grandchildren, they were to be together and share the Passover meal. In this sharing, we pick up a few things, but we pick up that in their meeting, they're not only sharing a meal, they're sharing tradition. They're not sharing only tradition. They're sharing a testimony of the God who took them out of Egypt through his mighty hand. They're relating how wonderful, how marvelous, how majestic it was to cross the Red Sea without any intervention of men, but by the hand of Almighty Jehovah, they went across on dry land. And they would relate this to the next generation, a generation who has never been next to the Red Sea. But this was the message that was to be communicated from one generation to the next. Bless the name of the living God. They were only to know that they are sharing a meal, they are sharing a culture, they are sharing a tradition, they are sharing faith, they are also sharing a testimony of God. And what is important, we know with our generation that we live with, you don't do anything with them without answering the question why. Why are we doing this, mom? Why should we go there? Why should we do, it, do, do this now? Why must we sit like this? They are always why, why, why? But in this instance, in the Passover celebration, it was a good ground, fertile ground, for one generation to answer the why to the next generation by indicating that the Passover was begun because God was dealing finally with the enemy of Israel. He was dealing with Egypt. He was dealing with sin. He was dealing with the futile nature of men to present a redemption which comes from above, a redemption which comes from God. Because from the lamb, the blood was to be used and be smeared on the doorpost to protect that family. God had given an instruction. He said to Moses, this night, while you are in your families and you are sharing, uh, you know, this God is wonderful. I love God. He's God of order and great uh, orchestration of events. While they are sharing the meal, they as a family, they are not worried. They are not stressed because they fulfilled the commandment. God said, when you slaughter the lamb, use the blood. Smear the doorposts. When I see the blood on every doorpost, the angel of death will pass that house. They will not die. So the family was not stopped only for one incident. It was saved even for future generations. May we bless the name of Jesus. Basalwane, brethren, it is important uh, for us, those who are of the old fort, the old school, we, we must be able to share these secrets, these nuggets with the next generation. Uh, if we can go back to um, the Exodus incident, we learn by Tandegayo that in this incident, um, Israel was a holy nation set apart by God to worship and serve only him and no other God. And they were in the midst of a people that served other gods. And while they were serving other gods, they had heard that Israel is serving this different God that they haven't seen with their own eyes, but whose works are well known whose works have been seen. Others have testified how the great sea had swallowed uh, Pharaoh's army. And uh, or others have learned how uh, God had done great mysteries in Jordan. But in this instance, God was revealing himself as the God above other gods. That is why the instruction was, if in your house you have smeared the blood on the doorpost, you shall be saved. It's amazing, uh, brethren, that every time when God instructs us to do things that will save us, he instructs us on things that look very foolish, 
things that look very much like they don't make sense. Like in the current scenario we find ourselves in, the most uh, uh, proficient position, most suitable position, most winning position for the church is prayer. Is a, a, a position of intercession. And even this Holy Communion, which you come with from the book of Exodus chapter 12, it's a winning place for the church, but it looks very foolish. It, it looks very nonsensical, if I may say so, to the next generation. We drink a, a, a fruit that represents the blood of Jesus. We take bread and we are saved from a tangible uh, attack. How is this possible? But we know that our God is a miracle working God. This is the same God that allowed a virgin to be pregnant and give birth to the Savior of the world. This is the same God that allowed a man who was running after Christians to destroy them. That is the soul of Tarsus to have a moment or a, a a, a, a situation where he meets with God and he understands that I have met with the God of Israel and I must repent of my ways and follow this God. And he throws everything to the side. He follows God and he stands out as an apostle of God, having written most of the New Testament. In reality, our God is more real than what is known to be real. Our God is more real than the battles we face. Our God is more real and the challenges we face. So going back to the scripture of the Passover, the Bible reports in verse 14 that God instructed Moses that this day shall be a memorial to you and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord. Hallelujah. The day of the Passover shall always be a memorial. It shall always be remembered and always be engaged in hallelujah as a nation you will remember passover but the reason behind remembering passover is also that it is a feast to the lord your savior in jesus name throughout the generations you shall keep it as a feast and an ordinance this is how we can impact the next generation this is a feast that we celebrate to thank a Lord, a God or our Lord who has saved us. Because we know, brethren, that the Passover of Egypt was a pre-symbolic presentation of a Passover that will come when Christ has come. When Christ came, he fulfilled this which was symbolic in the physical, not only for Israel now, but for the whole world. So the generation that shall receive Christ shall be the generation that walks in victory, even in this fourth industrial revolution. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. Hallelujah. And uh, some people may say, well, the Passover and the generational tendencies of God went by with the Old Testament. No, I beg to thee, a child of God. If you read in the book of 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, God declares to our generation, to this new creation now, he says, but you are a chosen race. You are a chosen people. You are a peculiar people. You are a royal priesthood. Oh, hallelujah. Kulunkulwami, what a way. You are royal and you are a priesthood. You are a combination of the divinity that was previously separated. But you have been brought together to be a royal priesthood. And you are a holy nation. And you are a people of God's possession. Not only you, but even the generations after you. So this old fourth generation has a big debt to pay to impart to the next generation the testimony of our God, the healer, the redeemer, the God who saves, the God who answers prayer, the God who provides. Hallelujah. It's a good opportunity that a new testimony shall be built in this time all over the world. The God who overcame Corona. 
the God who overcame the arrest of the whole world is still the same Jehovah, the ancient of days, the God who answers, answers prayer, who answered the prayer of Lazarus and is still answering prayer today. I wish to pray, Basalwane, as we are done in Jesus' name. Father God, we thank you, Almighty Savior, Redeemer of the whole world. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ for making us a people, a royal priesthood, a people set apart for your glory. As we celebrate Passover, Lord, in our houses, it is not a mistake that we find ourselves having to celebrate in corners, in quarantine, in isolation. It was like that even in Egypt. Father, we thank you that in our celebration, we will be raising an altar of praise giving to you. We'll be raising an altar of sacrifice to you in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for the healing of the world. We pray for the salvation of the world. We pray for your glory to be manifested. Yes, still the God who redeems and saves, even in this time, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name be blessed. Amen. <laughs>